Vodafone presents the pre-match. Hello everyone and welcome back to I Am Sydney 2018 and we're just about to jump into our first game between FaZe and Order and Mitch. We're excited for this, this is a bit of a rematch from I Am Katowice and this time can Order get more than three rounds is the real question. Yeah, it should be interesting. Will Nico drop below 100 ADR in, you know, 19 rounds or, you know, similar things that we have, we need answers to. We're about to get them. I mean, it's going to be the same format that these two teams did compete last time. Exact same best of one, but yep. will the maps defer? Can Order this time bring their A game and show what they have against FaZe? Or are they just going to roll over and just get completely pumped, as we do say? Yeah, I mean, they have the experience of the uh, latter of those two things that you mentioned. So maybe they'll have learnt their lesson, learn a couple quick tricks that they can use this time to make it a bit more competitive. Well, I absolutely hope so as well, because Order, they definitely need a few more results. Domestically wise, we're talking about how they failed to qualify for the APAC finals. They lost against Greyhound. They come into IM Sydney as third seeds, actually. They lost against Chiefs in the upper bracket semi-final, yep. and as a result, they had to slog their way through. I mean, they did make Tainted Minds as well as Legacy look easy, but the, you don't want to be dropping games when you're trying to push yourself to be, to be the best in the region, because all of a sudden then you're up against FaZe, and that is never going to be an easy matchup any day of the week. Yeah, definitely not. I mean, we only see them sort of fall flat against their domestic rivals. When they played at APAC against this MVP PK, definitely one of the better teams in the region. Um, they actually 2 won them and were able to take that upset. And when they're losing to these sort of domestic uh, rivals, they're actually losing in close games. So it's not like they're getting steamrolled or they're having too no, big of issues, not. but we expect them to be winning these games. Uh, I mean, we're looking at the roster of Order. The reason why we're focusing a little bit more on Order, obviously, is A, there's some of the Best Aussie familiar. boys, and then B, uh, for the viewers that are not too certain about order, I mean, I think at this stage, if you're a Counter-Strike fan and we talk about FaZe, you already know who's going to be on the roster. Yep. Whereas order, you're going to be scratching, okay, who's exactly on there? And we've got Liaz, who has been hyped as one of the best players coming out of the young talent pool inside Oceania in the last two years or so. We've got Imagine of that team immunity fame who did go overseas to play at the Major, and he's going to be the one leading the ship. You've got Alistair of the Chiefs lineup last year, which took down North in that nuke match. That was a very tight affair, but it did knock North out of I Am Sydney 2017 and then followed up. You got Sicko, who we've been hyping up as one of the best hybrid players or just an insane AWP coming out of New Zealand and to clean up the entire package. We have... Uh, we have Hats is the last player, and I feel like Phase is kind of like this sort of, uh, uh, rather Order is kind of like a, a oceanic phase or whatever. They kind of took like a star player or one of the best players from one of the teams and sort of meshed them together in this lineup with a more experienced sort of player to keep them all in line and keep them all in check. It's just about whether these players are sort of going to turn up as the star players that they have been in the other roster. Like Alistair has been having a bit of trouble fitting into the roster lately, so. We're going to need at least three of them to turn up, if not all four of these, you know, sort of players who have, we know have a lot of firepower as well as Imagine just have a steady game and maybe that even won't be enough because FaZe is just on another level. All right, let's take a quick look at the vetoes at the moment and let's see what our map picks are going to be. So Cache and Dust2 banned out, so we're not going to see Dust2 immediately, which makes me a little bit sad, but that's all right. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I feel like FaZe, it's just the best of one against an underdog, so they're Inferno. sort of just getting rid of the weird maps that Fa uh, that Order could potentially get uh, you know, an advantage on or win with the gimmicky kind of strategy. We're going towards Inferno, definitely one of the top maps for FaZe. They're used to playing that one. And also a pretty popular map for Order, but they have had a lot of uh, struggles on it against you know domestic competition lately. You know, It's one of the maps they play pretty close, but definitely they have a lot of sample size. This is a map they're comfortable on, so they're going to need to bring their A game, especially on a map like Inferno, you know, it's a down to a lot of individual firepower and stuff like that. So they need to be really comfortable. They need to be playing well because if they're just getting out on Banana and Mid or they can't hold things properly on CT and the rotations aren't in order, haha, then um, it's not really going to go well for them. All right. Give me a five cents, Billy. Just five cents exactly. <laughs> Who is going to take this and what do you think the margin is going to be? I think it's going to be FaZe for sure. We'll take this one, but it should be a little bit closer than it was last time. It won't be as big of a blowout. They tried to play them on a skill intensive map in terms of Mirage and Nico just, you know, pretty much rolled all over them. So maybe they've learnt their lesson a little bit more. They've definitely done their homework. There'll be a lot of things to watch for FaZe on Inferno in terms of, you know, doing your research. Orders played it quite a lot. They should be semi-comfortable. So if they turn up and they play pretty well, I expect them to get maybe 10 rounds or something like that, maybe 10 or 12 rounds. Also depends on the pistols. Order needs to grab those to just give themselves an early advantage and stuff like that. Um, but Faye's pretty good on those pistols. We'll see how it pans out. 
Yeah, absolutely. And very, very excited to start bringing you the first game very, very soon on Inferno. I mean, I want to just briefly uh, mention the point as well that Order did ban out Mirage. So not interested in trying to recontest on that map. They have conceded they may be phases lesser on that map and yep. maybe going into Inferno a little bit more of an even playing field. Obviously, Order have felt a lot more confident coming into that. The thing is that they kind of have to do that because the problem is like, when you're playing on Mirage, uh, last time you get you get kind of rolled by Nico, so there's not a lot of sample size of things to sort of improve upon. You can't go back into the same map and try again. Well, here we go. It is going to be the first map of I Am Sydney 2018. And what a way to start off. It is going to be Inferno. Phase up against Order. Oh boy, can't wait to jump in the action already. It's going to be the pistol round. Phase going to be starting on the T side. Order on the CT side. And it's going to be good to see what the firepower of the T side can bring and what order can do on the CT side to be making sure that the T stay away from the bomb sites. Yeah, let's see if order can kind of hold them up a little bit on this CT side, if they can try to, you know, get a bit of energy in there, get their sort of firepower rolling, uh, play their positions uh, as well as possible and try not to let uh, FaZe run over them too much. Um, and we should be getting pretty close into the pistol round. Not really sure what's happening in the bottom right overlay. Trying to see what kind of grenades are coming oh, out for the phase side. We're just waiting for one player to reconnect. Yep. So we'll just wait a little bit longer before we decide or before we actually see truly what the buy is going to be for phase and what the buy is going to be for order. I mean, for order, I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be the exact same thing. It's going to be Liaz most likely with the kit or mm -hmm. maybe uh, imagine with a CZ and a smoke grenade and then Liaz with the kit. We'll have to see how they do the setup or if they decide to try to counter phase by any means mm. because phase obviously have done a few certain pistol strats before. Yeah, well, we've got FaZe with a smoke and a Molotov already on Kerrigan, so that's sort of, you know, your, your standard kind of utility you'd see. Usually more of a flashes than Molotovs, but the Molotov can be pretty good if either you want to use it to grab map control and set up a sort of play, um, or whether you just want to throw it to sort of flush out one position so that you don't have to worry about as many angles and, you know, smoke, you, you can use that for anything. The same thing, you know, you could use it uh, less so, more often, smoking off one side and mid uh, used to be the old sort of strategies that we saw um, on previous versions, even in previous versions of CS, um, not only on this map where you would just smoke off one side and mid and go quickly up dig with the Glocks or whatever, but less less and less popular nowadays. Um, usually on the pistol rounds, you'll see a lot of carpet stuff. You'll see occasional jungle pressure with the Glocks sort of moving through that area rather than through dig if you're going towards A, as well as on the Nana. But we're about to get into it. Yep, so overall it is going to be two smokes for FaZe to use. And for Order, we've got the kit and two flashbangs and Liaz. There's no CZ on anyone. There's no smoke grenades. This is just going to be all that USP and armors trying to take down the Glocks of FaZe and already a very, very split approach from FaZe. Yeah, absolutely. Sicko just going to spot the second mid push there from the apps. You always get a bit of free information on this map just at the start of the round, and they are going to fall back a time, not going to get caught off by Rain, who has been upgraded to the P250 armor, and he's definitely not the player that you want to be dueling in these pistol rounds. He's definitely able to take off a few heads before you can even sort of get yourself rolling as order. But the problem is now they don't really know that FaZe has walked all the way up jungle. Imagine he hasn't even seen Rain wrap into the arch. So this opens up a whole new territory of what FaZe can do now that they've taken control of CT spawn. They can wrap back towards B. They can put pressure on A first and then sort of um, see as they're doing. Liaz is going to rotate straight into Rain. He's probably going to get himself taken out pretty quickly. They'll only have to deal with one player on this a, uh, B bomb site. And just like that, Rain has just crawled th slowly through CT spawn and now Hats, a lot of work to do, instantly mollied out, forced into the open and Nico is just going to put that single Glock bullet into his head and clean up the B site pretty easily. Order still going to go for this, they've got the kit lost in construction or someone should have picked it up, but they still got to get past Rain, who's just standing his ground with a P250. Finally there's a response, Alistair and Sicko, but they still need to find three more and Sicko's already been dinked down. This is already a dire situation for Order to try to breach into the B bomb site. You have to be hoping for to give them a few more opportunities. But Carrigan's the only one to do so right now, and Alistair will do well to find the opportunity. Time is ticking away, though. Guardian has the flashbang ready. He's lining up for his teammate to peek. No one's tapped the bomb just yet, but here's the flashbang. Exist will peek out. Alistair trying to stick the defuse. It's not going to work. FaZe will pick up the first pistol. Yeah, just everything going right there for FaZe. Rain was able to creep into the arch, and they did perfectly. They even threw the utility towards A to force Liaz to rotate. He didn't even have armor, so it only took a couple of quick P250 bullets 
um, from Rain to take him out. Didn't even need to hit one of those headshots. And then Molotov perfectly forces out Hats. And Alistair, you know, he does his best there to get a couple kills on the back end of the pistol, make things interesting, picks up the kit. So he possibly could have even uh, hit a couple nice headshots and actually taken out the round. But it seemed like before order even got started, they were pretty much on the back end. And unfortunately, that's exactly not what you want to see. Order letting people through their seat, through their spawn in the early parts of this game. It's definitely going to start them off on, you know, a more frustrated foot rather than things going smoothly. And that's that's definitely danger territory. I mean, very, very difficult to be watching CT or that jungle line, especially if you imagine he was more concerned about the diggity angle. But now needs to be concerned about B site. There is going to be pressure applied from Guardian with the MAC-10. But similarly, there is a small pistol stack coming out from Order. Not a full-on stack, not a full-on upgraded kit. We've got CZs on some of them. And we've also got the scout on Sicko, who's still watching jungle. This is meaning that Order doesn't have to rotate anyone off the B site just yet. There's a smoke, second smoke going to be used. They're going to be barraging in right now. The CTs have a good surround, but Guardian's just going to crack it right open with the MAC-10. He's got assistance with his teammates, and this B site stack is going to do very minimal damage. FaZe is going to get the bomb plant down one more time. And already, just like that, B site is now just cracked open once again so easily by FaZe. The flash is just far too effective against Order in that round in particular. Um, fortunately enough for them, apart from Imagine, nobody really brought up too much. They do recognize how important the uh, utility can be for their CT side on this map. You don't want to get yourself in a hole, economically speaking, too early on. And, um, you know, thanks to Alistair getting a couple of peel kills in this pistol round as well. Um, he was able to get plenty of money despite getting his CZ and armor. Sicko able to get himself a scout um, with that kill in the last round. Definitely can be dangerous with this weapon, but probably... Ooh, there's a kill on Nico. So will he be able to retain this? He does have Exist hunting him down. Exist going to run up. Is he in one-shot range? Not really sure on the damage. Uh, so I didn't quite see his health, but he does take out Sigo Exist anyway. was Scout goes down. Exist was 72 HP, so... I think that's Scout's a little bit finicky sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. It depends where you hit them, I guess. So... Um, yeah, we'll see how this sort of moves forward. The fact that um, Order uh, opted to save so much money in this last round and they're not buying any P250s in this round, this indicates that they're really going to be relying heavily on the utility. They're really going to be relying on the Molotovs and stuff like that. The HE grenades on their CT side to do a lot of work for them, obviously, as well as the AWP for Sicko. But will somebody else buy that for him? He certainly can't afford it by himself after that scout purchase. He's a bit of a banana stack, but should be cleaned up pretty quickly here by FaZe. Um, especially with this Molotov as well. Guardian. It's just a clean sweep coming out from Nico and Guardian as the MAC-10 Molotov and AK. Clean sweep. I mean, just USPs, but we've seen how a flock of USPs can be very dangerous, especially if they overwhelm one opposition. Yeah, he hit a couple of nice dinks on, on a few of your players, and suddenly you're picking up the, uh, the weapons from the enemy players. Someone's got an AK, and you give yourself a bit of a chance, but definitely wasn't one of those rounds, was it? No, absolutely not. Didn't even look close after Guardian and Nico were able to deflect the aggression. So Alistair just going to make FaZe earn the kill. But he's going to be found out pretty much in the open in CT spawn. Not much that you can do there. So the first buy round's coming forward and we're going to expect a much better buy from Order than you normally see in a first buy round when a CT side does invest in pistols. Yeah, you got Hats picking up the AWP there. Will he be able to hold that on onto that himself or throw it over to Sicko? Probably going to throw it over to Sicko because Sicko can't afford his own. Well, we'll see how we go. Hats has been known to secondary AWP a little bit, but usually Sicko's the person you'd be used to seeing with it. No, so they're going to opt to take the AWP towards B. Sicko will just be playing that jungle side. Looks like uh, Lia's setting up a smoke towards Banana, going all the way deep into Banana. So they're going to try and fight for control of this. Molotov goes to the top of Nana for phase. Nico, he's not really going to contest Nana at the start here. He's just going to let Order have it. Lots of apps control coming out fast from FaZe. And with that MAC-10, they might be going for a quick play here. Yeah, Carrigan could be jumping right out right now. They've spotted out Alistair. He's already got him one, though, so he's done his job. Imagine just needs to hold firm on the bomb site now. Pressure from Carrigan, but the MAC-10 can't get stuff done. Imagine just allowed a little bit of reprieve to reload the M4. Now the CT's in a prime position to deflect Guardian as well as Nico. But you can never count out Guardian's AWP. Neither Nico's AK-47. Bomb still on balcony. It's close to the T's to retrieve. But you still got Hats, who's not part of the action right now. Three CTs on the A bomb site, and, well, none of the Ts can find anything. Order pick up the first gun round convincingly. That is a big victory for Order. And they've picked up a second AWP as well, so they're going to be able to go straight into the uh, double AWPs, which will give them a bit of a different look on their CT side without actually having to invest the money into those AWPs themselves. 
Um, that's definitely going to give themselves a boost to the economy. One of the biggest ways you can mess up your money on CT side is just to go too fast into the double orcs before you have the uh, economic stability to do so. It's going to be another full buy across the board from FaZe, but their money looking a little bit lower. And with only the one loss bonus, only about half their team will be able to buy into the next round if they do lose this one. See how the orc picks go. Will the CTs be able to retain one or will Guardian... Uh, be able to get himself a pick. Going to contest this Nana control this time. Looks like FaZe might. Yeah, but similarly, Order, they want to be contesting this as well. Hans has the AWP, but Nico just sitting in the cunt out at the moment down at the bottom. Nana is coming ever so closer, and Hans, if he's not aware to this, they could lose his Nana control very easily, but it looks like Hans is going to back off for now. He's just going to be holding a much tighter line as the rest of FaZe. Going to be lining up for still a very split default. They're not committed to either bomb site just yet. Yeah, FaZe just looking for any aggression that Order might throw at them pretty early in the game. It's sort of a low risk at this point to be aggressive. Later in the half when they might, you know, threaten to break their money or something of that nature that might happen. Sicko not quite able to pick up the shoulder of a FaZe player peeking him in mid. And the uh, progression smoke dust come out towards the jungle side is going to force him to moto, which means defensive stance from the CT side on this A bomb site from here on out. Probably a double pit, maybe one pit, one site. And we'll see where FaZe do end up going. They've pushed Order back on all fronts of the map, and Order won't be able to grab any information. So rotation coming out from Liaz pretty quickly here is going to leave uh, Hat Solo B with the AWP at Coffins. Looks like he might be able to pick up Carrigan here. That's going to make a big difference. The fact that Carrigan's walking through to the B side is going to give Liaz a lot of information about the phase's intentions. Yeah, and they're coming in right now, but they haven't smoked off Coffins. Hats misses the shot onto Exist. Nico will punish him for missing the second shot as well. Liaz late to the rotation, tag down low as well. The CTs will begin rotating in, but Alistair's not even allowed a single chance to get into the bottom of Nana. Rain just lurking at top mid. Just completely cleaning up this Nana flank. And as a result, Order, it's going to be a one-dimensional retake. And already just deflected as well because Sicko loses the AWP deal against Guardian. Guardian's looking for more. Guardian's hunting. Oh, a headshot to Emag. And will be able to pick up Leaz as well. Three kills for Guardian in the round. And FaZe have just reset Order completely. Yeah. Be interesting to see if Imagine's going to double save and whether they do buy up a lot of pistols across the board in this round or whether they're going to opt to have Imagine go for a lesser sort of weapon and just continue to buy into this next round as well as the money on the rest of them kind of decent. You know, Alistair and Sicko might not be able to afford much utility. Liaz and uh, Hats should be a little bit better in terms of that. But um, that was definitely a round that Order could have won. They picked up the flank on Carrigan. Liaz, um, you know, sort of outpositions him in CT spawn as he comes through. He realizes that's going to be an option as soon as Brackets control is conceded. And uh, from that point on, it looked like an Order round. But unfortunately, Hat's just not able to get it done at Coffins there. And that's definitely going to cost an Order a round that they definitely could have retained. They could have reset face here and been, uh, you know, pretty quickly back into this one. But they're going to have to play from behind now. That's sometimes the difference. You've got to be landing the op shots, the opportunities are granted to you. And Order do invest a few pistols on some of their members. But as you said earlier, Emag doesn't have that much money. So they're just looking to potentially get as much money in the bank coffers as they can. Once again, a very, very slow round coming into this B bomb site, but it's going to be explosive soon. Out comes Carrigan with the MAC-10. He's got the AK-47s backing him up as well. As a matter of fact, Carrigan doesn't get any of them. It's the AKs on Nico and Rain. And Sicko trying to join the party a little bit late with the Desert Eagle. Won't be able to find much. And once again, it's the B bomb site that FaZe are just hitting every single round. And why not? It's been working. Be interesting to see if they... Uh Play off that tendency further in. Nice little deagle shot there from Siko. He's going to take down Kerrigan. And Kerrigan only had the SMG, so not too much of a loss there for FaZe. They do work out where he is and don't necessarily have to go hunting for him here. Nico just baiting from the coffins area. Yep, just gunshots ringing all around. Siko doesn't know exactly which direction to look, to look in. And Alistair well, just looking to cart the P250 into the next round. But FaZe are going to go up 5 1 so far. Order. Not a great start, especially considering they've been losing this B-side in consecutive rounds. Yeah, that last gun round definitely was their opportunity to sort of work their way back into the game. Will they buy up in this one or just take the uh, the passive approach? Looks like they're going to try to get straight back into this half. Um, it's going to mean that they're going to lack utility on some of their players, so we'll see how they end up playing it. Definitely would be wanting to look at Sicko in this round, see if he's able to get himself a quick pick. Obviously, Guardian's been looking for that counter or progression, staring up towards the top of mid. 
might take it towards bottom of Nana as well, especially with a better spawn. Looks like he's going to do so. Yeah, but once again, look at this aggression coming into Nana. Guardian, he doesn't care that there's a smoke grenade. He's just going to go straight in, but the bullet goes through the barrel, and as a result, Hats is going to be damaged. Well, he's dead now, but it wasn't due to Guardian's bullet. It's due to grenade. Four and four. Yeah, good grenade there from Kerrigan to secure that frag, meaning that the aggressive play from Guardian doesn't all uh, doesn't all account for nothing other than damage on the CTs. They have taken quite a bit of it so far in this round. So just a couple bullets here for the uh, phase side will pretty much end two of them. And this is where it gets really annoying for order as they're in a four versus four. They're going to have to split up in terms of who's at what bomb side and which sort of... Uh, areas they choose to give up towards FaZe Clan as FaZe fairly spread out. They're definitely going to start playing with them a little bit. Try to force rotations into different areas of the map. Looks like Rain's going to go for a bit of a mid-round into this jungle uh, as a bit of Nana pressure is applied. Exist walking back towards... I think they're just going to go in pairs, it looks like. Yeah, maybe a wrap through CT once again, but Nico, he's actually picking the AWP, and he looks like he wants to push his way forward. Now, Sicko, he had the open library. Rain picks him off, and that means that Alistair has a lot of work to do. Faze, they're coming back into the A-bomb site, but if Alistair can buy a little bit of time, he'll be able to find Rain. But he still needs to dance around. He's dancing. He's trying to buy as much time for the rotation, but he can't pick up any more of the T's. So the bomb will go down the A-bomb site. Finally, the rotation coming out from the CT side. But Nico's watching the correct angle. Nothing you can do with an MP9 from Imagine. And Leah's just going to save this M4. FaZe just once again switching it up. And they're making it look way too easy at the moment, Pilly. Yeah, unfortunately, you know, playing with the rotations there. Rain getting the pick does pull the rest of FaZe back from B. Um, despite, y you're wondering why the B players don't rotate so quickly. It's because FaZe is putting pressure on Banana. They're taking control of it, maybe shooting some bullets or throwing some grenades, which is going to keep the um, auto defenders there. They can't just full rotate towards A, as well as Alistair playing in that graveyard area. You know, you might wonder, why isn't he just taking the fight with that Modo player? Um, he can't be sure whether someone's coming out carpets, coming out diggity. They have absolutely no control out of that side of the map. So if he just goes for wide swings on these jungle players after picking up rain, you know, he's He's playing in a defensive position. He's not exposed to any other angles. That's a free kill. But from that point on, he has to worry about three different angles that FaZe could be attacking him from. And you can't know. You can't. You just got to pick correctly. You got to hope for a bit of fortune in your favor. And unfortunately, it does get taken out. Yeah, this also means order back on the pistols again. So FaZe just continuing the damage. They're building up money in their bank accounts as well for order. I mean, they've only got Liaz really as the serious firepower. M4 retrieved or saved from the previous round. And in that mid-round, a lot of the time, CTs are forced to sort of go for a bit of aggression because you generally at a disadvantage as the CT, you know, just going 2-2 two, two on either bomb side, or you have to stack, you know, 1-3 with one person playing more retake. But um, in that in that scenario, you know, FaZe were really well spread out to defend that aggression that, and Auto didn't even end up going for it. Look at those, that damage there from Imagine. He's able to pick up one, so that's... Good work from him, but it doesn't look like FaZe is going to be losing very much more than that. Liaz is going to shift walk his way through Speedway. So Nico, lurking on Banana, won't actually hear him. If he was running, he would. Yeah, I mean, there was a brief moment of opportunity for Auto maybe to pick up a few more kills. Imagine was able to swing into the second person, but look how FaZe were taking their apartment's control. It's not a single man at any time. You've got Exist just waiting, spotted Alistair earlier, and then you had both Guardian as well as Rain coming in together. And that's what you want to be doing, just coming in in unison. But Leaz has managed to sneak his way into library. Doesn't look like he's going to go for it, though. Just wants to keep the M4 forward to the next round. I mean, Karagun is going to be guarding the bomb. That's his job, the babysitter. And looks like most of these guns going to be retained. Maybe Leaz might go for a kill, but it's not really. He's just going to sit. He's going to retain his M4 because money definitely a lot more important for order than it is for FaZe at this point. FaZe getting rolling. It's going to be a timeout most likely from order. We'll be talking things through, working out where they're going wrong. I mean, definitely conceding a lot of these areas of the map and not really getting too many picks in the early parts of this round. When they did get that double AWP pretty quickly at the start, they were able to sort of... Uh, go for those picks um, despite not being able to take them. But unfortunately, since then, you know, they've had to kind of concede a lot of map control. Phase has definitely been a lot more aggressive. Guardians, you know, running through a smoke in the fifth round or something like that to just go for a pick only hits the leg, but it could have been a lot worse. And, you know, from that point, 
you know, FaZe is just so good at playing in these 4v4s. They're just on another level in, in comparison to Order's adjustments. They're spread out. They're ready for the aggression. They're playing with their rotations, and there's not a whole lot else they can do. One thing we talk about in, in Inferno is the importance of Nana control. And so far for Order, we haven't actually seen too much Nana control. I mean, earlier on with Hats of the AWP, yeah, we saw a few grenades, but not the full-blown Nana control. Is that something that Order needs to start doing in the next few buy rounds? As Sicko trying to find the timing shot through the flashbang. Looked good with the X-Ray, but not going to connect for any damage. It's looking like a little bit more Nana control coming out from Order, but they really need to be gambling this rotation over. Leah's looking like he's going to be heading back through the CT spawn, and every second counts that Phase waits. Sicko will be pushed off this angle most likely, but a lot of people coming out of apartments. I don't know whether they'll be able to hold this from this dig setup. Yeah, and oh, look at this. Reigns just jumped straight out. I mean, a one for one. This is going to be favorable overall for Order, but Leah's is just coming in a little bit too late, and the Orp doesn't do anything at all at the end of the day. Doesn't find a single pick, and it's going to be three coming out of apartments. And just like that, it was a diggity stack from Order. You can't do anything as Order when you're not looking in apartments. And there it is. Another just quick round phase, just changing up the tempo and hats. Not even allowed the opportunity to take the orb into the next round. And funnily enough, you know, we saw um, back at the Boston Major, if you go back to Inferno with Cloud9, doing this against FaZe when they ran their dig setup. Um, you know, with Olaf and Rain getting caught off by people jumping quickly out of balcony. Looks like, you know, they've lost to that one. They're going to add it to their playbook, and it's worked perfectly against Order in that round. Yeah, I mean, FaZe may have noticed as well in the previous rounds that Alistair was boosted up, so maybe trying to dictate the tempo in terms of going, we know that you're going to be playing Diggity. We're going to take it off you. And it is back onto into square one for Order, really, with CZs and HE grenades. It could be a good HE nade stack. And here's the problem, like last time they played FaZe, you know, in this best of one on Mirage, they got, they got Nikurd pretty much, you know. The supporting cast didn't even need to turn up as much. The HE nades come out and do take him out this time. But they're losing a very different type of game. FaZe is definitely out team working them a lot more than we saw in the previous series, rather than one player sort of rolling them over. And that's, you know, absolutely showing in terms of, you know, just how they're losing map control. You know, they're losing man advantage quite a lot. Yeah, but now an opportunity for the CTs to strike, especially with Seiko taking down the low HP Carrigan. Oh, and now Hats has actually picked off Rain from Pit as well. It's all left it down to Guardian with the AWP. The pistols have managed to work out for order. They are being able to get the picks that they needed. Starting from E-Mag onto existed apartments, there was just no pressure coming in from a different angle. And Guardian slowly crawling up. His position is now revealed, but he's still going to have a good crack at it. He's going to draw out the CZ. Just buying a little bit more time, trying to find any opportunities. The CT is not granting him anything. Oh, he can't get the flick onto Sicko. Hats was too low, so he'll drop down to a single shot. But Order do manage to sneak one away on the back of the pistols. FaZe maybe just playing a little bit too lax in that round. And, you know, we have a bit of a running joke in uh, the domestic scene in Australia that people are terrible at defending anti-ecos. Um, when you're terrible at defending anti-ecos and you live in that environment, you get pretty good at winning them as well. And uh, FaZe just, you know being caught off guard a little bit, a couple of pistol shots going the wrong, this or that way, and Order's able to take out the round, and that is going to, you know, be a big boost for them. They're going to get full utility across the board, the AWP on two of their players, which is going to allow them to get some of these picks if they wish to. Being pushed back by the Molotovs at this point, but it's looking like they might fight for this. Hat's definitely looking to take a, a pick, but Liaz is going to chuck a flash over the top. Doesn't blind Nico at all or Guardian, so ineffective flash gets Hats picked off very early there, and you know, going for that Nana control, it's all good if you can try to go for it, but in this case, does not work out for them. And FaZe in even man uh, situations has been completely out positioning them. We'll see how they go with a man up. I don't expect them to drop this one. Yeah, and Rain just got some critical information as well. Notice that there were two on the A bomb site. This is going to allow them to just take this top mid control slowly as well as apply pressure into Banana after the first initial pick, but aggression coming out from the CT side, but Rang, he's just too good, just sitting in boiler, and no matter what order try, it just seems like it's a rain on their parade. Sicko, finally, but finally getting a pick with the AWP, could be too late though. Faye is still coming into the A bomb site, and Sicko getting damaged, but can't deny the bomb crossing over. Yeah, and it's just looking like they're getting outclassed by FaZe at this point in terms of rotations, in terms of map control, and... Phase, they're either, you know, going heavily 
into the bomb site, especially in the anti ecos just off one flash and one smoke and, and uh, taking complete control with men, you know, manpower basically, or they're spread out all over the map, especially when the pigs are going their way and they're just taking advantage of that and order doesn't seem to be able to deal with either of those at this point. Yep, so Sicko is trying desperately to hold on to the AWP, but now pressure coming in from CT Spawn. Flashbang, ooh, it's a very effective flashbang. Bounces off the correct angle. Now all the T's are hunting, and what is that coming out from Rain? What do you say to that? Just jumping around, getting shots like that? Uh, I think you, you get a little frustrated at it, and then you press tab and realize you got $1,400, $1,600 on half your players. You're down 9-2. Some teams would just go screw it and buy up some pistols, maybe get an AWP on Sicko and try to take the game back in a gimmicky fashion. Order's just going to let it run a little bit further away, try to get some more gun rounds in there. Don't know if I really agree with that at this point because you haven't been too successful except for the one pistol round that you did win. You're losing in the straight up game, maybe it might be time for some gimmicks. I mean, sometimes just getting the pistol stacks at close range, dueling out at apartments, they need to acknowledge that FaZe have been taking fast control of the, the boiler position as well as apartments. And now FaZe just going for, once again, another shake-up of the plan. They're just going to go fast into apartments, but Leas with the Desert Eagle, at the very least, getting one pick of his own. Emac coming in, but he doesn't have an upgraded pistol. They should know where Leas is. Hats might be rotating in a little bit too late, as now the pressure is coming in from FaZe from all sides. And it is going to be a pretty routine shutdown from the AK-47s from there. Faye is going to be hitting double digits. Three rounds left in this half for order to try to do some damage. And this is not a good situation, Pilly. Look at their money. Yeah, they've got to take a timeout to decide if they, they're in Famous territory at this point. Maybe Famous double AWP might be the go. Looking like it. Imagine's going to buy himself up an MP9. Of course, we don't buy Famouses anymore. That gun's just terrible. MP9 does have a better firing rate and can do a lot of damage at close quarters. And we've seen, imagine, obviously play at a lot of those lines, play in apartments, you can play close on the A bomb site and you just mow down T's, attacking down. But really, Hats having not the greatest performance on the B bomb site, just being completely outclassed by Guardian and Nico so far. Yeah, I feel like they're just getting outclassed across the board. Nobody's really turning up too much, except if you go back to the pistols. Um, and unfortunately, that's just that's just how it goes. I mean, you know, you're looking at two completely different caliber teams and Auto is going to have to dig deep. They're going to have to play really well across the board and it's just not working out for them today. So far on the CT side, definitely hasn't been. Uh, Sicko's thinking about pushing beyond the threshold and looking in the second mid. Decides not to risk it though. But really, it's just falling back to another default for FaZe as well as Auto. Yeah, and it's just... In this kind of game, Auto hasn't been able to do very much against FaZe, unfortunately. Sometimes they have been able to get the picks, but um, it hasn't been able to net them very many rounds. And once again, trades tit for tat. Looks like Nikos has practiced putting that Molotov out multiple times. And once again, the pressure is going to be slowly applied in top mid. Smoke's coming out. Emag is just going to be boosting up Sicko, looking for an opportunity but nothing to be found for now. Yeah, unfortunately, sometimes the smoke goes one way and uh, you can only see a hair of someone in a certain time. You can't really see where they are the entire time. So another progression smoke out from FaZe and they are going to use it to grab brackets. And look at this rotation coming out from the CC side. Run boost coming out to clear out the library line. Guardian will be able to pick up Alistair, who's trying to get some control at top mid, and now the pressure really is going to start coming into jungle. Emag just going to be sitting close to a tree. The spray's coming forward, exists. He still pushes to the smoke. Emag had the advantage, but only with the MP9. Sicko misses a shot and won't be allowed another opportunity. FaZe just collapsing the A bomb site once again. Nothing Order can do, and they just need to say this UMP and M4 just need to completely back off, as now FaZe is going to be looking to go on the hunt once again. They want blood. They're getting it. Yeah, and, you know, Order's not being very fortunate in this game and getting pretty much out positioned across the map. It's going to, you know, the pressure's at one point when you start off the game and, you know, the score's not running down. But once you're down 2-11, you're feeling pretty bad at this point. Pressure just builds and builds and builds and you miss shots that you normally would hit. So even though it's a group stage game, a lot of these teams will definitely be feeling the pressure. The APAC team's going up against some of these heavy hitters. It's doing well to nullify some of the aggression and do damage, but unfortunately, I'm not allowed to cut the AK into the next round. 
And this means that order, I mean, at the stage, what do you say? Do you force up or do you say for the final gun round? Um, probably somewhere between those. You want to go for maybe pistols and armor. Give yourself a chance to steal this one away. And then next round, have enough to get some, some rifles and some armor as well as some grenades and see if you can take that one out as well. There's not really much point going full, you know, full in, uh, economic investment into this round because the extra utility on top of the pistols is in a huge advantage as opposed to just having the pistols and the armor. You're going to have to resort to some kind of gimmick to win it with just the pistols anyway. No, it looks like the gimmick is going to be this boiler as well as a top mid stack. A lot of presence given over to boiler. And Alistair's going to try and bail it out of dodge. Not allowed. Rain's just been absolutely solid at holding this apartment to boil line so far. And normally you'd say you'd be scared for a T coming out of boiler into the CT stack. I'm more scared for the CTs right now considering it's rain. Yeah, definitely. Probably one of the best position players in that position, both on the T and the CT side. Just so familiar with it that he's pretty much got it down to a science at this point. Crosshair's always in the right position, just clearing out all the angles, laser beaming people. It's exactly what we expect from rain. Yep, so stack not going to work out for order as FaZe just meander their way over into the B-bomb site instead. And this should be, once again, a very routine shutout for the AK-47s. And we should be jumping into the final round very soon as well. And we'll see if order do have anything. You know, at this point, you can see the frustration on their face, obviously. But um, you're going forward into the last gun round. You've seen a lot of depth um, of what FaZe like to do. They've pretty much only shown two sort of faces. One is the anti-eco where they simplify the grenades down and they go for a quick sort of hit into one area. You saw Guardian go for an individual place, which shows they're confident, as well as just the spread out default across the map. They haven't needed to pull anything special out to sort of completely outclass order in this half. And we'll probably see more of the same in the last round phase. They don't really need to do anything differently. So order needs to recognize what's happening and maybe they can pull out some kind of special play in the last round. But what is that coming out from phase? Three orps on the T side. Yeah, well, they're expecting some aggression probably from Order to try and win into this round, so they would be correct. Three orbs, you think, on angles. the T side? Yeah, why not? Yeah, it's not going to work this time because Hats just goes, all right, I've got an orb as well. And in a deal where you're blind and I'm not. I would love to see the stat of the how many times the winning team loses this uh, this kind of a round where they're this far ahead because I feel like this always happens, almost always, you know. They never ever close out this last sort of gun round in the half. Either the CTs have got everything worked out at that point and they've seen a lot of depth from the T side or the T side just gets a little bit lax and sort of gives it to them. I mean, Exist and Carrigan are giving a good crack at this as Exist has been able to get a few more picks working for him. They're trying to draw out the fire but Sicko will be able to get one. Can't find Exist just yet, though. Is this now given an opportunity to try to clutch this out? He would have to get the entire race and just out in the open. Sick at the very least gets the pick off. Well, it's going to be a 12 3 score line at the half. We'll be back after the break.
Hello everyone and welcome back to I Am Sydney 2018. We're in our first match between FaZe and Order. And so far FaZe just dispatching their opponents at ease on their T side. 12 to 3, now they're moving on to their own CT half. And this is already looking very dicey for Order, Mitch. Yeah, it looked like a pretty relaxed day for FaZe so far. Rolled out of the hotel room, sort of came down to the studio for a quick game of Counter-Strike. Um, Pretty much still on their plan A on the T side. They're having a few jokes over there. Order's looking pretty stressed in contrast. Um, obviously down a lot of rounds would take, you know, minimum pistol um, and then probably one of the best comebacks we've ever seen from an Australian team uh, to win this game. Uh, against FaZe, I'd say it might be a little bit too much to ask for. I mean, uh, for Order to have a chance in this match, they had to come out, take the pistol round, had to get these buy rounds in their way, and maybe a few lucky clutches, but it hasn't been the case. The three rounds they've gotten, one was a convincing buy round, where it was a bit of a bonus round coming out from the T side, where they came in a little bit late from FaZe. The next one was a pistol buy. Australians are very good at pistols, winning and losing them. Yep. And then finally, it was a very loose round coming out from FaZe at the very end. Three orps on the T side. Uh, we generally, we don't advise having more than two. Yeah, not a whole lot to talk about in terms of the order camp. It's all going to start off here on the pistol. Double grenade probably going to go out towards Banana and maybe elsewhere. And flashbang being used to sort of push some of these FaZe players back. They don't seem too uh, worried about what's happening. Guardian going to be on the P250 with the armor. And apps control taken by order, as well as Liaz up towards the top of this banana. Will he be able to take out Carrigan? He actually does, so that's a very good pick here for order. And it's going to mean that phase, especially if order does slow down, probably will have to try to push out a little bit more. Some information, maybe a pick and some map control. They can't rely on holding against five clocks with only two people on each type. It's going to be exist up on top of these first oranges. And order, just going to do the sensible thing. Group up towards B, throw some smokes and get five lockers in there. Yeah, and the dangerous part for FaZe is that they don't have armor on two of their members. Exist is posted up here with the CZ. Has to do a lot of damage right now, and he's going to be doing no damage whatsoever. Nico, he's good, but there's just too many T's, T's around, and he's going to be overwhelmed. So Order do manage to get the bomb plant down for now. It's Hats! Oh, that was pretty impressive. Out of Hats had a very quiet CT half. He'd be happy with that as an opener for the T side, as they do manage to take the pistol round. Yep, and that's, you know, step one of uh, many steps up to the top of a mountain and then down the other side, you know. Even if you do start to get yourself going, you still got to close out the game. And, you know, sometimes that can feel even harder than just getting yourself back into the series. Phase might be a little bit lax. But we do have a Nova on Guardian as well as an HE grenade looking to make some himself some money for his AWP trust fund. The rest of phase also forcing up across the board and definitely a team to be known for being dangerous with these force buys. Oh, you definitely do not want to be counting them out just yet. Three Desert Eagles, one on Rain, one on Nico. I mean, the fact that Exist has had uh, 12 kills already, and I would say he'd be having a quiet game, is just testimony to the fact on how hard that phase were playing on their own T side. So, can't count them out just yet. Can't count either side out, really. We'll see how Order do sort of work this one. They're definitely going to be having to look at a, a series of best case scenarios moving forward in this game. And this starts off with clean anti-eco boys. Can't be losing too many guns. Obviously can't be losing the round. Let's see what they do opt for. What's the low risk play here from Order? And it looks like it's going to be towards B site. But this smoke grenade from Carrigan could stop them in their tracks. FaZe like to throw this down when the execute comes in and then play in front of the smoke. And that could definitely give Order some problems. It's coming a little bit late though, Guardian trying to dance around. It's actually Carrigan who picks up the kill, but Guardian's just being an absolute nuisance, just ducking in and out from second oranges. We'll be able to get the kill with the Nova, so that's money. And Carrigan, he retrieves a UMP. He sprays down Imagine on the retreat. Has also takes some of the damage, but 30 seconds left in the timer. Order have lost so many members. FaZe have lost none whatsoever. Leas and Hats, they're going to have to regroup and decide what they want to be doing right now. And it looks like they're going to be splitting up. I'm not sure what's going on right now. Leas has retrieved an AK-47, maybe to try to draw the rotation. But FaZe, they have the numbers advantage. They have the position advantage as well. Exist. All he needs to find is a single deagle shot. And there it is. The bomb's been lost. Leas, there's no chance he can win this time. is not in his favor. And FaZe have just managed to pick up a full pistol round convincingly. They might not even lose a single member in this round. And that is an absolute disaster for order. You can't be starting off your T-half like this. Yeah, absolutely not. As soon as Carrigan throws that smoke down, two people it pretty much separates order. Two people go straight through the smoke into the bomb site, and two people go, oh, God, what do I do? And uh, hesitate behind the site, and that's just... It's a, 
uh, how do you say? Death it's, trap. Well, it's a death trap, but it's also just because they're so far down in this game, you know, they can't be confident enough to push through the smoke. They don't know what's on the other side. And, you know, it's easy to sort of be that armchair gamer who goes, well, you just all push through and you commit and you try to take the bomb site, but not that simple when you're down this far against one of the best teams in the world. Absolutely not. As now it looks like they're lining up for a bit of nano aggression. Nico is just going to drop an artillery right onto Sicko. Nothing you can do as the tease. And now this is how you take nano control in phase. They've just cleared everything out. There's a little cap at the edge of the smoke, but Nico doesn't need the edge of the cap, just needs a little bit of noise. And he'll just put Alistair six feet under. Finally, the guns come out from the T side. They deflect the aggression, but they've lost a lot of HP in the CTs. Uh -oh. Just hard on the hunt. Rain. Back 10 up behind them. And the smoke does go down onto the... Oh, the gap, Kev. Yeah, it's not a good gap because it means Guardian knows exactly what's going on. And as Reigns is coming from behind, there is just not enough damage being outputted on the back of the T weaponry. Liaz is going to give it a good crack. He's going to try and flip through the edge of the smoke. Guardian, that's not a great spray. Liaz, he'll try to get out, but he won't be able to do so. A little bit sloppy coming out from Guardian. And you can see Carrigan probably just having a bit of a laugh just there. But at the end, phase they're allowed to laugh because they still get the round convincingly in order. I mean... You're up 14-4. He's got nine assists. He's just an ADR gamer, Kev. It's not about securing the kills anymore. He's just setting up all his players. It's best case IGL, you know. It's all about the team. And order, they've decided we're just going to keep going until we do get a round. It's going to be a force buying pistols, Billy. Yeah, it's looking pretty sad. Let's see... Second mid aggression with the flashbang does blind the first couple of players on order. Didn't even look like they were ready for that uh, push there, but imagine yeah, that's pretty impressive. It hits two CZ shots from the second mid there onto Guardian, and Carrigan's taking a fair bit of damage. Looks like a pretty quick flank in from uh, it is Carrigan at the bottom of Banana, but he's pretty low. I mean, he's the only person towards that B bomb site. He's going to call for Nico to rotate back around, and order is taking their time, waiting for FaZe to sort of push out a little bit more. Liaz is going to know exists towards the bottom of that apartment, and it's not like they're going to fight for brackets control here. Has just shooting out a couple of his CZ bullets, and he's only going to have one clip left to make some impact in this round. And order just grouping up towards A. A look at the timing coming out from the grenades from Rain as well, as now exists. We'll be able to just pick off one target and order just being barraged from all different angles. A pick there and a kill over here, and all of a sudden, phase they just nullify what could have been a very dangerous situation into a very easy situation for them, where it's now a four and two. Order still going to have a good crack at it. They haven't retrieved Guardians M4, still relying on the CZs to do work. Yep, just using some flashbangs to sort of. Uh lessen the angles that they have to worry about. Instead of 10 angles, now they have to worry about nine. And you know, it's not not the best case scenario. Molotov does come out to flush out where Nico was standing a second ago. Nico, that's a nice entry into this round and Liaz is gonna be able to get one back in a two on two. And if he had converted that one against Rain, we could have been talking here about a fifth round for order, but I don't think we'll be talking much more. Absolutely not, Pilly, because Faye is now a match point. Everything to work with in the CT side in order. After just force, force by after force by, they've got pretty much not much to work with. It's going to be Caesars and Tech Nines once again. Same what we saw the last round. And really, it's just going to be a question of what are Faye going to do in this round? Are they going to play patiently or are they just going to be trying to put the throttle down and just end this game right here and right now? Yeah, handful of grenades to work with for order and HE nades coming out towards the T-steps. Luckily, he's going to do too much damage. That Molotov does push Guardian back at least, so at least you're not losing someone five seconds into the round to the AWP. Quick group up towards Nana and those HE nades. Surprised they didn't do more damage, only Leah is sort of taking much of it. And this Fnatic smoke that they've thrown up to the top. Yep, Guardian is just here with the AWP and Nico close. And look at this attack from Water. It's just strung out from all sides. There is nothing you can do when your attack is just coming delayed and not all together. Once yeah. that smoke goes down for phase, we've seen it time and time again. It doesn't matter what opponent they're playing. Once that smoke on top of Nana goes down, no one's getting in. The door's already shut and the door's definitely shut on Order as they go down 16-4. Yeah, just convincing stuff coming out of a phase. It didn't even look like their A game once again. It looked like they were cruising along, just having fun with the game. And what do you say about Order, Mitch, at the end of the day? It just almost looked like there was nothing in it for Order. Yeah, definitely. I mean, when you see these sort of underdogs go up against some of the best, especially in the opening game of such a big competition, the pressure's just so 
so you know immense upon them they can't really deal with it as much and unless a couple things go right right at the start of the game and you get yourself rolling in just the right fashion then there's not much you could do the pressure's just too much for them they don't have the experience and unfortunately that's going to be another learning experience luckily did get one more round than last time. So, I mean, we can talk about that's an upward trajectory. They got one more round, but the story still hasn't changed, which is just order just looked third class compared to phase at that stage. I wouldn't even say second class because that's how far behind they looked. There was no rounds where, I mean, one by round while well, it looked that they were in it, they managed to take one T round in, or the pistol round. That was literally it. There was nothing else in that. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. I mean, phase pretty much just bringing their plan A not really having to go too far down the list. Pretty yeah, much just cruise to a victory there. Do you mean they brought their plan B? Because plan A is your hard hitting. It is felt it? like... I yeah. thought that plan A is just the one that you sort of always start with and then you move your way further down the list. But I, I thought the opposite. Because plan A for me was like, this is the master plan. The best plan. plan. The oh, best yeah. plan, and then right? then if something goes wrong. Yeah. Then you, you rely on the plan B. And it just felt like to me there was... They didn't have to rely on a plan A. It was just... Plan whatever that was. We're going pretty far down the alphabet. <laughs> exactly. <at that> <laughs> they just they were just hitting their shots in the back of the players that they needed to. I mean, Carrigan didn't have to do much. Neither did exist, and they were still getting a lot of kills and a lot of damage. So that just speaks volumes of just how well they were playing together as not only individuals but as a team. Yeah, well, phase moving forward forward in the tournament, we will see whether that will be the game that will be their warm up to uh, a nice long run through the tournament here, or whether that's going to be the game that's going to give them too much false confidence to uh, keep rolling, probably the former rather than the latter. Absolutely. And as for order, they'll be heading into the lower bracket best of three. We'll wait to see who they will be going up against in that one. I wanted to quickly ask, were there any positives that you could take out of order playing on Inferno just then? Or was there just not much that we could actually gauge? Um, there wasn't a whole lot, but I will say that I feel like a lot of the time they felt like they were losing control of the game or they needed to make impact. They were actually peaking some lines with the orps on the CT side, being like, oh, we're losing banana control. Let's actually try to go for it here. Um, they did have a couple of times where Lias was making some nice rotations through the CT spawn to try and get on the right bomb site and defend the attack that was coming in. Um, but apart from that, not a whole lot. They just didn't really turn up to this game. So even if the theory's there and they were doing a couple nice things here and there, it doesn't really matter when you know you, the other team just steamrolls you. Yep. So uh, do you think we'll be seeing Inferno later out of order, out of phase as well? I mean, phase. I mean, shouldn't be talking about. It? Phase and Inferno, but do you think Order will try to go back into Inferno and play that in the lower bracket best of three that they have to encounter now? Yeah, I feel like they've always kind of gone and lent back on Inferno. No matter what the series is, they're happy to play Inferno, especially in the best of three. It's bound to make it in there. It's often quite a decider map, you know, rather than just sort of picking it outright. A lot of teams will just sort of leave it in there and you'll go down to one of those decider maps, whereas, you know, your overpass is previously Cobblestone, but this time probably be more Dust 2. You used to be a decider, but it's so new in the map pool that people probably won't go towards that one as much. So you're looking more at your Infernos, your Mirages to sort of lay, lean back on as your third map, whereas you pick a more specialist map like Train in the early parts. I mean, we've got a little bit of time, so we might as well talk about Dust 2 for now. So yep. obviously that with the remake of Dust 2, that's the addition in the map pool after the change on April the 20th. And what do you make overall of that change? The removal of Cobblestone, addition of Dust 2. Do you think this is good in the long run or just more of a we won't see until maybe three, four months down the track? It's sort of two different issues that you're sort of working at, looking at. Number one is removing Cobblestone. That's obviously a, a correct decision. Whether that's more correct than other maps, you know, that's always up for debate. But everyone pretty much agrees it's a problem map. It's pretty boring to watch. You know, the T side has a lot that they can do, whereas the CT side, you can't be as aggressive on some areas of the maps and stuff like that despite changes to sort of boost that. It hasn't really worked, so people are pretty sick of Cobblestone. Adding Dust 2, who knows, could be interesting. It's a map that's worked for a long time, so it's obviously going to continue to work. It, it's not a broken map fundamentally. It's something that we've all enjoyed watching in previous iterations. Whether that's exciting for players and, and viewers, who knows. Um, yeah. it, it should be interesting to see. It's, uh, in that last series, we saw in the ban phase that phase actually took it out. Um, as opposed to going to play it. I expect FaZe to be one of the teams playing it. They're always pretty tricky with their vetoes. They like to embrace um, out vetoing their opponents to get an advantage, especially now that they don't have as much firepower and it's a map that Nico is comfortable on. Um, them vetoing it in this game isn't going to tell us anything because they just want to go to a map that yeah. they're comfortable on. They're more than confident beating order and whatever. I was going to say, it could be mind games coming out of phase once again. But speaking of phase, they do dispatch of order in very convincing fashion, 16 to 4. So that is our first match done and dusted. But we do have another best of one coming up. It is going to be Ty Lu up against SK Gaming. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back after the break for IM Sydney 2018.
All eyes are on 